Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, inviting you to an episode in which we shall explore this strange little device that you see in front of you. One of two such being now in the house, graciously bestowed as gifts by my kid's godmother, for which of course we are very grateful and the kids admittedly love them. So this is something like a smartphone, as you can see, but I got curious about the device and so here I'm borrowing one to have a bit of a closer look. And what makes you an impression as you scroll through it is this is evidently not Android. It's not even old Android, it's just something apparently completely different. But the uh, fonts are off, the way things are presented are strange, and it does not in general appear to be any known major system, but seems to be something of its own kind. Unfortunately, it's not possible to install applications on it, but it has a couple available. Yet, looking through them, what you might notice is that none of them seem to have a keyboard. Like games, I mean, that's lovely. We're having here some, some 2048 and some other games. Th this is a device which shall give children an illusion of having a smartphone, but without access to dangerous things such as the internet or the actual ability to call to Japan. So in that role it serves marvelously. One is of course always a little bit, you know, afraid will this be practical in the future too. I do see at least a couple of useful functions. I mean, the calendar is nice, the flashlight is nice, an alarm, a calculator, a timer, a stopwatch. All of those things are usable, not to speak of this media focused screen over here with the camera and the photos, videos, music, a recorder and player. So as an um, mp3 player sort of thingy for jogging, this will certainly serve its purpose marvelously. But looking closer, we discover none of the applications has a keyboard. Like the calculator seems to have something of a keyboard, purely numeric, of course. But I don't see any standardized keyboard. This looks like a part of this particular program. By the way, can we do something large? What would happen if? Is it going to switch to scientific notation or is it just going to die? Yeah, it's just going to die. Okay. <laughs> but you see, there is nothing that has its own keyboard. I thought in such cases one can go to the calendar and if you wanted to write a note, you know, you could normally make some appointment or do something anywhere. But it does not look like that. It seems that there is just no function to that and you cannot essentially write anything with a keyboard. That's strange, but an indication that there must be more to this device than what is meeting the eye here. My guess was that this must be some sort of device originally, which either never features a keyboard and it's just made to be this way, or that it is something which would expect a hardware keyboard, which just here is not installed. So as we're not having a hardware keyboard, we cannot use these functions and hence none of these many apps allows you to actually write anything. I mean, discounting the possibility that you simply write uh, stuff here in paint or something. Yeah, uh, does it even work? Oh my God, the paint is having some sort of lagging element to it. <laughs> I think this smiley rather, rather captures my mood of trying to use it. But let's hope that my kids' more gentle fingers will be able to, to handle this. So, no keyboard. Looking around, I mean, there are the settings, but they don't allow you to set who knows what. I don't yet know what exactly school mode is. Maybe this is something to prevent functioning, so to keep the kid not distracted, but that did not look too 
to you know fanciful like changing the language but english is fine the ringtone volume yeah that might be an issue because that's really loud the brightness lovely school mode i don't really care uh, restoring the settings why would i and time and date yeah you can set the time and the date that settings are not very rich instruct was another program yeah, program of sorts where if you flip further you will discover here some support email address which is saying support at usidctoys.com and that gave it away that usidc must be the company producing this sort of device and here we have it on amazon apparently the exact same thing so i mean what else shall this be <laughs> okay I thought interesting then let's sync it with the computer I mean maybe something will happen maybe I will be able to discover some information there which is perhaps not visible through the user interface I did try to connect via Android's ADB thinking that maybe this is some childish GUI program of sorts running underneath on Android but nothing like that Instead, I found that this phone, like once I connected here to USB, oh, charger connected. No, my dear, it's not just a charger, it's actually a computer you're connecting to. So, connecting to it, you can select mass storage. And opening my Linux terminal, I could see here when I say LS USB that this is some device apparently product produced by MediaTek that is calling itself Adoro Primo 413 like this should be on one line 413 interesting Doro normally make grandparents phones you know this this sort of phone for old technically uh, re uh, retarded people who don't really like any smartphone and who are so afraid of them that they are willing to use su such a type of device every old person i have known has hated these phones and regard it as, a, it as a sort of offense to be gifted one. Uh, <laughs> but googling the Doro 413 did turn up exactly such a device. So here we are having exactly such a Doro Primo 413 phone. And as you can see, yes, it does have a hardware keyboard. So if that is the basis of that system, that would explain why none of the applications feature a keyboard. In fact, that platform seems to expect this keyboard, but just not to have it. Now, the other thing, which apparently is annoying half the internet, is that these things are lovely, but the computer does not necessarily recognize them if you're using Linux. The solution to that issue is actually not very complex. You just need to edit a file and change one variable there. And that is etc usb underscore mode switch dot conf on my Ubuntu system. So pressing that, there is this variable disable switching equal to zero. Now, if you change that to be equal to one and write that down and get out of here then if i reconnect the phone and select mass storage the phone does appear and in theory it even appears as two volumes a smaller 2.4 megabyte volume which seems to be the system volume and much more corresponding to what you would expect from such an extremely lean system. I mean that it is something of the size of about 2 megabyte does not terribly surprise me. And it also does have a larger 4 gigabyte volume, 
which is nice because here finally I would be having access to the photos and the music and whatnot. So if I want to connect this phone to the computer and, you know, do things with it, that would be the way. Well, I hope this has been interesting and helpful to those who are having such a device. And with that, actually, today's brief video is already over. Thank you very much for having been here tonight, and I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures in the future. If not yet a member of our friendly community, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and from me, goodbye.